You're listening to the Asotucon Sessions by Effective live from Asotucon 2024. This is uh, Glenn Pash, and I'm here at the Asotucon podcast stage in collaboration with Effective. Sitting across from me is Anthony Gingoli. Correct. There we go. Senior Director of Automotive Strategy and Partnerships, and also Brendan Jackson from Effective as well. Um, great, gentlemen. So we, uh, we're talking about content. Our previous guest, we were talking about content creation. So now we're talking about what I'd love to talk with you about is this idea of a content strategy and where your company fits into it. I think there's a lot of confusion around what uh, you know the strategy is through OTT, addressable, like you hear all these words. So just to level set expectations, Walk the audience through what your company does and where you hear the confusion points from your dealer clients about what you do and how do you address that to make them understand. Yeah, so as part of Effective, we live under the Comcast advertising umbrella um, and our solution set is really the premium video ecosystem, spans the entire ecosystem from live traditional television to video on demand through to streaming. And so we partner with dealers to to connect essentially their their brands with consumers in a meaningful way. Um, and one of the things that we're most excited about as it relates to uh, the, the TV ecosystem, you know, when you think about Effective, you hear Comcast, you think oftentimes you, just a cable company, right. live TV, very static, spray and pray, whatever you want, to, however you want to call it. With new capabilities that we are now deploying through addressable advertising, we're able to target specific uh, messages and creative to specific audiences at a household level. And being under the Comcast umbrella, again, the, the, the benefit there is that um, we are ultimately uh, then able to stitch that ecosystem together across under one singular campaign, one impression goal, deliver advertising to those households across live TV, video on demand, and streaming. So, so let me touch on that because you, you again said the word addressable. Yep. So some folks are going to still go. I'm not quite sure that me- what that means. But when you're saying I can deliver specific content to a household, is that based on my assumption is that if I watch certain channels, my ad's going to be to me, targeted to me, what I want to see on that, where maybe my wife is going to see a different messaging because she's on a different set of channels. Is that something that I'm correct when you say addressable or am I completely off base? To some extent you're correct, but it's at a household level. Okay. But so let's just say, for example, you may be in market for a uh, Toyota truck. Anthony might be in uh, in the market for a Toyota SUV. I'm not in market. When we deliver an addressable campaign, you would receive the truck, you'd receive the SUV, ad unit, and I wouldn't receive anything. anything. Okay, great. Uh, So Anthony, where... When you're talking to dealers, because this, even though it seems like this has been around for a while or in some way, as you said, uh, under the Comcast, and every every time I'm, I see you at shows and we talk with your company, there's a new iteration, no expansion, more capabilities. So where still is that confusion for a dealer when they're going OTT? Well, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And how do I use it? So it's So it's a two-part question. Where's their confusion and how do you recommend this in their marketing strategy? Yeah, I think uh, what's happened is dealers have been kind of told, hey, go do your linear, your television campaign, then go do your OTT campaign, which is digital. And the way we look at it is, no, these are one thing. This is all TV. This is all video. And we're trying to deliver your audience to you. So as a dealer, you sit down and say, who do I want to reach? How often do I want to reach them? How do I want to reach them? And then we put that plan together. So it could be uh, top of the funnel, broader reach. Um, here's your campaign across many audiences. And then as we work down, we get closer towards addressable and to streaming where we could say, okay, let's get in a one-on-one environment. Let's talk specifically to a customer set and deliver the content you want that is specific to them at the moment they want it. And why it's so valuable is because we could stitch both of those platforms together Mm -hmm. and measure it. And right now, what a lot of dealers are doing is they are measuring their OTT independently. Maybe they're measuring their linear. Maybe they're not doing linear at all anymore. Right. And they can't reconcile all these things together. And we think that gives us a unique advantage. So on that point, because I know the dealers sitting here are going, ah, 
How do I measure it? How do I know it's working? Now, my thought sometimes is, well, how did we measure before? Right? How do we measure a TV commercial before? Oh, I had someone tell me that they saw the commercial, so it must be working. And I think the problem with digital is that we were sold a half bill of goods that, oh, with digital, you can track everything, and that's also a fallacy. So somewhere in between. So when someone says to you, well, how do I know this is working? How do I measure it? What are the metrics that you're sharing with them to say this is an effective, uh -huh, sorry, uh, uh, effective way to, uh, to execute marketing? Yeah, I think it comes down to there's the standard KPIs that come with any kind of television or OTT campaign in terms of um, delivery, um, time spent, things like that. But what we're doing more of is matching ad exposure back. So we know who saw the ad. We could share that back. And now you can take a, as a dealer, look at your own metrics, look at your Google Analytics, look at your organic direct search. Did it increase? Did it go up after the campaign? But now I can tie that back to the people that, that came and right. say, okay, this person came and I know they were exposed to an ad. I can draw some correlation that I helped drive that person there. I'm not going to take full credit, but we're getting closer to this world of um, being able to show the value of video across all screens and what it does to uh, a dealer's other KPIs like their website. And to right. your point, right? TV, linear TV, and streaming have for a long time been measured very differently, mm -hmm. right? There have been ratings points on the linear side. Streaming has been much more of a digital currency, impression right. currency. And like with the targeting capabilities of TV of continuing to evolve, measurement has as well. And so that's one of the kind of continued evolutions is now there is a common currency of impression across linear video on demand and streaming that allow us to understand how these different strategies are complementing one another, what's happening at the creative level, the platform, the device level, so that it can truly be optimized in a much more of a digital fashion. Yeah, and what I like what both of you were saying, especially what you were saying in terms of, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm not gonna be maybe be able yet to draw that direct line, but I can show that influence, mm -hmm. right? I can show the fact, and, and what I really like is the fact that if my ads are running, and I'm seeing tracked into my website moving up at a similar time, you, you have to believe that that's the influence, mm -hmm. right? That they're seeing this multiple times and, and, and people are now moving through this. Um, what, put your, put your you know, long-term view on, and maybe you can share something with us. Where are we going next? Because now, like you said, this idea of stitching, and that's what I like about your company is the fact that you have both hands, where someone who just is a OTT player, you know, that's all I'm gonna measure versus something that's integrated through this. And, and you all have done a very good job to say, well, I wanna be, help you integrate through and influence. I wanna show you how this connects to all of what you do through content and, and effectiveness. But long-term, like what's next? What, what's our capabilities? What's our ability to measure, influence, to be able to even get more granular, potentially more specific? What, what, what's coming down the pipe? You hear a lot about, in the past day and a half, a lot about CDPs and the mm -hmm. importance of first-party data from a dealer's perspective, but right. then also within the Comcast world, our, the first party that we have around ad exposure. And um, I, I think they're going to continue to see more the, of the ability to leverage first-party data from dealers within our platform in more automated ways. Uh, that's still... You know, again, we think about the, the bottom of the funnel, there's a place to be, but there's also, it, it's a part of the overall mix. And it's important to also be thinking about more broadly, how do you also influence consumers, potential consumers that are three months out, six months out? So to answer your question, I think it's one, one component of that is the ability to more easily transact on dealer's data and activate dealer's data. You mean pulling uh, it into your ecosystem? Correct. From them. Yes. Correct. Um, and then the continued measurement and enablement of that data uh, across the ecosystem. Yeah, I think what, what we know is what we don't know, right? And there's a lot of great companies here at this conference all over the place that do tremendous work in sort of measuring uh, what what dealers are doing to drive more sales, to drive more conversions. So I think we're leaning into what can we learn from the industry? Who can we partner with to help 
give us a richer, uh, richer audiences on the front end and then richer measurement on the back end so that we can rising tide lifts all boats and help dealers um, really eliminate waste in their spend um, and be much more effective in their campaigns. Yeah, and I think, I think what, you're, what I'm hearing is, is that idea of connecting with people and, and wanting to be open to collaboration. But to your point is if I can import data of people who've, who, who are your customers already, that also now my brain's going, well, I could run different campaigns for them, different campaigns for the people who are not, but in your market who are higher funnel, whatever. It, it allows you to become, to leverage all of your tools in a more effective way to, to help your dealers because now I'm not just pushing data, I'm pulling into this ecosystem of, of the CDP. And if I have it, I can go in and bi-directionally update and things like that. I really like that. Um, all right. Well, like I, I, I want to thank you both thank for being you. here. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this Asotucon session by Effective. If you want more content like this, you can check out our other podcasts. We have a daily show called The Automotive Troublemaker, Monday through Friday, here on podcasts, also live streamed on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. We also have a long form podcast called Auto Collabs. Auto Collabs. And if you just want to go a little deeper into this community, you should sign up for our regular email. We put our heart and soul into it. You can get it for free by going to asotu.com. We'll see you next time.